everybody, I'm Dwayne from Precision Diving. The topic of this week's video blog is going to be how to perform a pre-dive equipment check. One of the things I see many times in my local quarry uh, or on dive boats and other places is that there are a lot of people who just put their gear on and jump in the water and they never verify that actually their equipment is actually working and installed properly before they jump into the water. So this video blog is going to address some of the things that we need to take into consideration when doing our pre-dive equipment check as part of all of our overall pre-dive checks that we normally would do. Now here I've got my double set up with uh, my, my double swing and so forth. Pre-dive equipment check isn't just limited to technical divers. It also applies to recreational divers even on single tank setups. So for single tank setups, the whole process doesn't change, it's going to be the same thing. Once you get all of your gear assembled, the first thing you want to do is you want to start from the top down, making sure that your valves are going to be completely in the open position. We call this a flow check. And simply put, all we do is open up the valves so they are completely open. None of this you know, fully open, then quarter turn bull crap. Once we have all of our valves are open, we've verified that all of our valves are open, and I want to check to make sure that our regulators are functioning properly. So we can start off with our, short, our, our bungee backup, just do a quick test purge on it, make sure it's working. Then we can go over to our long hose second stage, and again, just verify a couple test purges to make, that, make sure that one is working. Once we've verified our regulars, regulators are working, now we can then move on and check out to make sure that our inflator, our, our, our wing inflator hose inflator mechanism is working. So we add some gas to our wing and we want to make sure that our secondary dump valve can let some gas out of there. I say our secondary gas, our secondary dump valve because our primary dump valve is going to be right down here, the pull dump, down on the lower left hand corner of the wing. The reason why this is our primary is because as we move up the water column, we want to present as much drag and resistance to the water moving up so that we're not streamlined and we can have a much more controlled ascent. When we dump gas out of this dump valve, our primary dump valve allows us to stay horizontal and in trim while dumping gas at the same time. So, we've added gas to our wing, we made sure that the, the, the deflate mechanism works, then we want to make sure that our pull dump valve also works at the same time. Alright, so we verified that our, our inflate and deflate mechanisms work. We have verified that our regulators are now functioning properly. Next up comes our lights. So on here, uh, a typical DAR rig, I've got my HID light on my right waist. I can turn it on and let it turn on for a minute because it is an HID light. I want to let it sit for a minute before I turn it off uh, just to verify that it's turned on. Next up, we want to verify that our backup lights are also working. So our backup lights here, all we do is give them a quick turn to make sure they're on and then back it off. Now with the twist on ones like the Halcyon Scouts and the Salvo Rats, you want to make sure you do a pressure check to make sure that if you push on the end of it, that it doesn't turn on automatically. Because uh, if you don't do that when you get under the water, the water pressure is going to suck the light head onto the body and then put pressure on it such that it turns light on automatically. So you want to make sure the light head is unscrewed enough, far back enough that it's not going to automatically turn on when you don't want it to. You don't want the, your backup lights to, uh, to run the battery time on a dive. That would be a bad thing. Once we've gotten through and we've verified that our regulators work, our primary lights work, our backup light works, our inflate and deflate mechanisms work, also want to verify that we have a cutting device on our waist belt. I have found, simply by going to uh, the dollar store, buying a pack of five or six knives or whatever they are for like two or three dollars, I can cut the end off and I get a very, very cheap knife. Uh, and the package will last me for a year or whatever because as a, as a technical diving instructor, 
I do lose these things uh, quite often, uh, mostly from just doing pre-dive checks, and I leave them on the floor of the ground or whatever. But verify that you've got your primary cutting device on your waist belt. Once you've got done, done through verifying all of your equipment on your rig, next you want to move on to your dry suit and the contents of your dry suit pockets. In our right dry suit pocket goes our SMB with our spool already pre-rigged to the SMB. We don't want to separate these things. It will just slow us down from, uh, from the deployment of it. So we keep these things attached. Loop a bungee inside of the dry suit pocket. We just clip it off in there and stuff it down into the left dry suit pocket. In our right dry suit pocket is going to go our wet notes, backup bottom timer, and our backup mask. These things are going to be critical uh, items that you might need to deploy in a hurry, especially a backup mask or to get out wet notes for decompression tables or to communicate with your team. And again, we put these in the right dry suit pocket. Backup mask, also on a double ender. Also gets clipped off onto the bungee loop. Make sure you're careful how you store these things because you want these things to come out easy. You don't want to have to sit there and fumble around and take up a lot of time trying to pull out your backup mask or your wet notes. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some things to think about when you're doing your pre-dive checks, your pre-dive setups and so forth. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to email me or visit my website, www.precisiondiving.net, and safe diving.